Good morning and welcome to our time of prayer this morning. It's not part of Methodist tradition as far as I know to mark the feast days of saints other than to recognise that yesterday the 25th of May was Aldersgate Day to commemorate and give thanks for that incident in John Wesley's life when his heart was strangely warmed and that inspired him to forge ahead with the ministry of evangelism. However, as a proud Northumbrian, I cannot let today go past without mentioning that the 25th of May is the feast day of the Venerable Bede, who in the late 7th and early 8th century was based in the great seat of learning that was the Benetine mon Monastery of St Paul in Jarrow. Here's a picture of the current church St Paul's in Jarrow and the remnants of the monastery are at the back, underneath and to the left. The Benedictine Monastery of St Paul was linked to the Monastery of St Peter in Monk Wearmouth. They operated at a pair, Monk Wearmouth being near Sunderland. I was born and raised in South Shields, a few miles east of Jarrow on the River Tyne, and grew up hearing of the lives of the great northern saints, Aidan, Cuthbert, Hilda of Whitby, and the Venerable Bede. His most famous work is the Ecclesiastical History of the English People, which gained him the title Father of English History. But he was a noted theologian, scientist, skilled linguist and translator, and teacher. In 1899, Pope Leo XIII declared him a doctor of the Church, and he's the only native of Great Britain to achieve this. It's been said of Bede by modern historians that he holds a privileged and unrivalled place among first historians of Christian Europe. thought this morning we might like to begin by sharing this prayer of Bede. And I pray thee, loving Jesus, that as thou hast graciously given me to drink in with delight the words of thy knowledge, so thou wouldst mercifully grant me to attain one day to thee, the fountain of all wisdom, and to appear forever before thy face. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and we shall praise your name. Praise and honour, glory and might, to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb for ever. God has sent into our hearts the Spirit of his Son, crying, Abba, Father, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved others as our Saviour Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. The Saviour of the world, Refuge of the repentant, forgives and strengthens all who truly seek his grace. He accepts you as his sons and daughters, and sets you free from the bondage of your past. For Christ died and rose to new life, that we might all share his wholeness and abundant life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Psalm 95 Come, let us sing to the Lord, and rejoice in the rock, our Saviour. Let us come and give thanks in his presence, and greet him with songs of praise. The Lord is a great God, a King supreme over all. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain heights are his. The sea is his, he made it, and the dry land was formed by his hands. Come. Let us kneel and adore. Let us worship the Lord our Maker. He is our God, and we are his people, the flock he leads with his hand. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, giver of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At the opening of this day, you call us out of darkness and into your marvellous light. Blessed are you for ever and ever. Amen. Psalm 63, the first four verses. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. Isaiah 42, verses 5 to 8. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open their eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. Let us pray. We pray for all whose day starts with anxiety, as they leave the security of home worrying about the risk of infection, particularly those whose health or age classifies them as vulnerable. Loving God, be close, keep them safe, along with all whose task today includes the care of frail and elderly. And for all of us, grant wisdom to make sensible choices, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. Help us to put aside preconceptions about other people, because that alters our behaviour and simply accept that they, like us, are precious in your eyes. Loving God, we give thanks for the extended family of local communities assisting with the needs of both frail and elderly confined to their homes. May every gift of love, every encouraging word, bring hope into lonely lives and a blessing to the giver. Loving God, in these days it is often difficult to remember that there are other events in our world. So we pray for those suffering the effects of the storms that seem to be coming more and more violent. We may complain about the lack of rain, but for many they suffer with the excess of rainfall and flood. Give them courage, Lord, and aid those whose unenviable task it is to bring help to the helpless, hope to those who have little hope. We pray also for the forgotten places where violence and starvation are a way of life. We pray that rather than a plague of locusts, there may be an outbreak of peace and generosity of spirit in bringing wars to an end and famine a feature of the past and not the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
Lord our God, as with all creation, we offer you the life of this new day. Give us grace to love and serve you, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.